Hello everybody, Arctic here, and welcome to the one I wasn't sure was ever going to happen. 10 Facts About No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is a procedurally generated open world universe game with over 18 quintillion planets for players to freely explore. And this week we'll cover the facts about the most downvoted game ever. Oh, it's not liked on Steam. Number one. No Man's Sky went gold prior to release. It actually went gold in like June or July. It's and was the fifth highest downloaded game on the PlayStation 4 the first week of release. Number two, a Reddit user purchased the PS4 version of the game for $1,250 two weeks before release and shared every you know, he did it so he could do a spoiler free play. Just, you know, no one was going to be in his way. And he did share a lot of the stuff, but it got DMCA'd and stuff. A lot of it got DMCA'd and taken down by Sony prior to release, just to kind of keep the waters clean. Number three. The game kind of felt doomed from the start, from being from the office being hit by a flood and losing a lot of work, to being sued for the use of Sky in their name, to almost being sued with um, issues over the algorithm they were using. And then also they've been hit by the ADA, the um, advertising, basically advertising bureau for false advertisement. They're being investigated now. So, ugh, it's, <laughs> legally this game is just not doing good. Number four, several of the ships in the game look a lot like uh, things from other pop culture stuff, from ones that looking like they belong in Star Wars and stuff with droid slots or stuff like that, or others that look like they came straight out of Dragon Ball Z. Number five, now I don't know exactly 100% how true this one is because I haven't seen it myself so I can't verify it, but a Reddit user by the name of F-P-R-U-S-C-H, for peace, I don't know. He posted about a monolith that had a little bit of a phony easter egg in it. You have to read it backwards. Now it says, pardon me for looking away from the screen because I can't memorize this because far, 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 too long. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, the Kovacs sought to boldly go where no one had gone before, and thus we took our towels and held our thumbs aloft and hitchhiked our way across the universe to carve a monolith. This is a reference to, like, Star Wars, Star Trek, Hitchhiker's Guide, etc. It's just a nice little fun callback. You have to actually take the monolith and read it backwards. I um, mean, yeah. Number six, within two weeks, 90% of the player base had fallen off for the Windows version. 90% of the player base had quit in two weeks. Holy cow. And we kind of know why. That being said, it slowly has been gaining players, just not, they're losing consecutive players, but gaining accounts bought. Like, they're gaining them at about a rate of a few thousand a week, new games bought, but with the player base staying around 2,000 a day, one to 2,000 a day, I don't see the game recovering anytime soon. Number seven, due to the game being as large as it was, you know, procedurally generating 18 quintillion plans, it's kind of a big game, they actually used virtual probes to explore the game and see if there was any bugs or anything they had to deal with prior to launch. That was kind of how they explored the game to make try and patch anything or make sure the generation was working. Number eight, at release in the first 24 hours, players found and recorded and registered over 10 million different species, much, much, much more than what we have on Earth. Um, and they had more than 212,000 active players on Steam. That's not counting PlayStation, just Steam. Number nine, nobody really got review copies early due to the fact that they had a day one patch and they were, thought we're gonna patch everything up and fix everything. The whole thing is, is whenever you uh, release a game and all that stuff, you have to actually have to uh, send it off and have it verified and stuff like that. So day one pa patches are fixed bugs that happen after that. So they basically dedicated all this time to fixing the game and releasing a day one patch rather than making a new build for the game. Um, so they just didn't want developers to get a hold, not developers, reviewers to get a hold of the information prior to and say, oh no, look how buggy, buggy this game is. At least that's what they say. So they really didn't receive review copies until the day the game came out and the day one patch was out. Number 10. Now with just about everything in this game being procedurally generated, which is really cool, um, even the music was procedurally generated, but they had help from a British band by the name of 65 Days of Static. They helped make the music that was procedurally generated. I don't know exactly how that worked, unless it was the whole fact they like recorded the audio and then the game generated the, the mix. I'm not sure how that works. That part's kind of strange to read and research and see because it's just like, huh? Anyways, thank you all for watching this. If you like to go and hit that like button. If you're new here, you can hit subscribe. If you want to help me out with new fact videos, you can suggest a game down below. 
on Twitter. Also, if you want to see my Discord server, you can go down below and say hi to me. Me and a couple other friends are in there. If you're wondering why I'm such high energy, I just got done recording a podcast. Um, when it's up, I will link it to it. I don't know. I don't know when that will be up. Hopefully soon. Anyways, as always, you guys have fun. I will see you later. Bye, guys. Ah.